Yeah. And we're seeing this, uh, these uh, shifts happening in what are consi tech, uh, theoretically considered more mature spaces as well. So uh, another round that happened the last week was around uh, Hebia, uh, raising about $100 million to support AI-powered document search. And their thing is they are trying to bridge the gap between traditional search and then basically what the LLMs are doing in sucking in billions and billions of words, they're trying to be somewhere in the middle saying that we have, you have all these documents in your company already, often being managed by some sort of document management or content management suite, but you can't necessarily search every single word and every single detail of every single document. So they're kind of trying to come into this middle. And I actually think that's an interesting space because right now it feels like we're trying to ask LLMs to do too much. We want them to both be good at language, but also somehow also be our search engine and our analytics and to do traditional compute capabilities that are much more binary and uh, and traditionally computational in nature. Yeah, so I, I'm not familiar with this organization. So I, I read this with fascination, um, mostly because it, it does land right smack in the middle of sort of two domains. And, and I'm not clear if that is because it, this is the emergent space or if it's going to be like, I mean, the tennis coach taught me that being in the middle is no man's land. You're just going to get squashed on, on both <laughs> ends. Um, Cause I'm not sure. Right. On the one hand, I, I agree. I think that, you know, we've been talking a lot about the fact that we're going to see this, whatever, a, an, an adjustment, a realignment, as, as people get co-pilot fatigue, they don't want to have to deal with 6 million different agents and interfaces to solve their problems. So a one LLM, you know, one co-pilot to rule them all, um, you know, makes a lot of sense, right? I can just go ask it this. Um, but as we'll talk about in, in a little bit with some other stories, that is often easier said than done. And then the other end of the spectrum, there's an entire class of organizations that have focused on this sort of enterprise grade search capabilities, people like Elastic or Algolia, mm -hmm. that you, you it, to me, I look and say, well, is it really a stretch? They've already got all the foundation of the semantic layer and, uh, and you know, authoritative data sources. If I just add some AI, you know, generative AI to that, wouldn't that make, make more sense? And so I, I'm fascinated by this. I don't have an answer. I think this speaks more than anything else to if you're a CIO today, the complexity with this, that, that you, you're you trying to solve problems. I appreciated um, Hebia's, I think that's how they say it, um, mm -hmm. origin story. I, I love anybody who comes to market saying, I had a very specific problem that I needed to solve and nothing was solving it. So we created a solution to solve it. You know, that that gave me confidence in what they're doing. Um, but, you know, I think it's this, this really interesting dynamic space and it's hard to see if this is really going to be the path. Yeah. But I do think we have to figure out these uh, areas of analytics, search, AI, and start, unfortunately, perhaps creating some silos again <laughs> in terms of figuring out where our investments go in each of those areas, because it's so easy to blend these and get lost. Um, I, I don't think the answer is to strictly define each of these as uh, absolute monolithic silos, but I do think there needs to be some idea of understanding how you're going to deal with your documents, to what extent your interfaces with your applications are going to be AI-based versus traditional. You know, all these the things have to be set as some sort of policy or some sort of direction in your company, or else it is going to be very easy for everyone to try to do everything with everything. <laughs> and to get really, really lost in that process. Yeah, and I think what it's going to come down to, and you know, obviously we've been talking about the challenges of of Gen AI hallucinate, hallucinations for a long time, but I think you know this in this particular case, right? Their origin story talks about the need to go through SEC filings, and and you know, this right. very complex, but but uh, this search where there's no margin of error, and so. You know, it's one of those cases where traditional approaches to Gen AI are obviously going to be challenged by that. Um, so I think we'll we'll see. Which